for agreeing to do this. Um, so I'm going to kick off with the same question that I kick off with everybody. Um, if you were in charge of changing the world and you wanted to inspire change, who would you pick to go alongside you? So if you were allowed three people, who would you pick? I think that's a great question. And um, actually, it's a quite hard one. Yeah, it's very difficult. <laughs> three people you know in terms of I think that's the problem there's so many people doing amazing things I, know. I think there's so many people who you never hear from you know I think that's the that's the thing so I'm not actually going to pick three people okay I'm going to pick three symbolic people so if you were to look at my um, LinkedIn profile my Twitter yeah. profile I have the fearless girl um, <laughs> in my banner Yes. And um, so that the fearless girl is, is really about female empowerment. Mm. Um, so I think she's been in place in New York for about three years. So she was actually put in place by, um, I think, State Street as part of International Women's Day three deep years ago. Okay. And, it's, and it's really about that kind of female empowerment. It's really, it was really put there to encourage more companies to have more women on their yeah. boards. So I think just a symbol of her um as i say in terms of that female empowerment and, and and you know you can do what you want and it's not because you're a woman it's because you have you know the same rights the same capabilities as everybody exactly number one and number two i picked david from david and goliath <laughs> <Okay>. that's <laughs> a really good one <laughs> and, it's, uh, and i think it's about the story of the underdog you know mm -hmm. and i think it's that really it's about having courage having faith and overcoming the impossible so i think you know I, everybody thought goliath was too big to fight yeah. but from david's perspective he was too big to miss mm. so <laughs> yeah so i think it was just around about you know having faith in your skills yeah and over as i was saying and i think it's really good for about you know people in terms of any background wherever they come from I know if, if you believe in yourself if you believe in your capabilities and that kind of that thing is you can overcome so many things yeah um and then i thought the third one i picked was robin hood okay yeah uh, <laughs> and i think it's that kind of you know the, obviously the principle is stealing from the rich to give to the poor yes i wouldn't quite advocate stealing from the rich <laughs> <laughs> or, i wouldn't kind of <laughs> Um, but I think it's actually, you know, I think we have a moral obligation, I think, really, to, to kind of really think about how we can give back, you know, I think looking about people who don't have the same advantages as yeah. us, and I think actually, if you were to just give a little bit um, of what you have yeah. and be able to share, so I have a little bit of a, an issue about, you know, some of these sort of billionaires who just sit on their piles of money <laughs> i was like how much money do you need really i know so, so actually a little bit of philanthropy wouldn't go amiss and, and i think actually it's just, it's just about being being generous being kind and i think actually when we think about you know what's going on in the current situation with COVID, yeah. i think it's actually given us a bit of a wake-up call really about how important people are over profit yeah, exactly <laughs> Um, and I think that that's really, and that's kind of like, so as I said, I thought I'd go for three symbols rather than actual people. That's good. So up to now, Annabelle probably had my personal best, but I actually really like that one. <laughs> you can apply it to so many people. So that's probably, sorry, Annabelle. <laughs> okay. And do you see this in the companies that you've worked at? Do you see these people on the boards? I think there's a, there's a big change. I really do. And actually, um, you know, being at Microsoft, I think one of the most um, enigmatic CEOs out there, and I don't just say because I work at Microsoft, so I might be a little bit biased, <laughs> but Matt Nadella. Um, is, is, is such a, you know, charismatic, a very, he's very much around, um, you know, how, what, what can we do to empower people, you know, and even with everything that's going on, it's always about people first, you know, what can we do to help our customers? Um, and obviously it's a commercial entity, so, you know, <laughs> you're still there to make, to make revenue and that kind of thing. But I just think his approach, he's so open, um, and he's really kind of changed the whole culture of Microsoft. So I think people like him 
Um, and I think that's where we, I think if you look up to a leader, you know, what do you think about a CEO? They want to, you need someone who's approachable. Yeah, someone you believe in. You need in. someone who's trustworthy. Yeah. You need to have someone that you actually believe in mm. and that you, you will follow. And I think he, he has, um, he has that kind of, I don't want to say power, but that kind of charisma yeah. around him, I think. Mm. So I think, and, and I think that's what we need to see. We need to see more of those type of leaders. And I think actually, when I look at some of the politicians, mm. dare I say, not pointing to the USA at all. <laughs> uh, and then just the kind of things that are going on there, there's just so much mistrust. I think yeah. there's, you know, I think that kind of, we, we need to kind of step away from that really and, and just try and think about you know how can we actually just paint a, a different world a different picture and a different way of working so with your sort of dream team of symbols um, <laughs> what would you actually change about the industry if you could um i think when i think about it's like, like cyber security as an example and one thing i have a problem with is how easy it is to blame the people when things are go wrong um so we're very quick to say well it was a user's fault because they clicked on the link you know they didn't know what they were doing they made mistakes and all of these type of things so we need to stop that we need to stop this blame culture mm. um and similarly you know again i think it's we're gonna we need to have a good hard look at ourselves actually in terms of the processes all the things that we've put in place because if they are making mistakes or if they don't understand, that's our job to correct it. Yeah. And either through more awareness or in terms of the technology and how that's operating in the background in terms of that automation and all of these yeah. type of things. So I think we need to stop looking at people as being the weakest link mm -hmm. and actually how do we make them the strongest link? How do we keep them safe, secure and productive, um, particularly in the environment that we're working in right now. I mean, a lot of people are suddenly found themselves working um, overnight. They've been doing this for months. They're highly stressed. <laughs> they've got they've got all that, so so many things going on yeah. in their lives, and then we've got to kind of be empathetic to that. Yeah. So you know, taking all that on board, what should we be doing differently? Um, what should we be doing differently now? And but also having an eye to the future about you know what should we be changing, kind of as a collective, if you like, yeah. in terms of how we should be thinking longer term about things, how we should be managing some of these um, processes. Yeah, and do you think we are moving towards that, or do you think it's still quite a long time away? I do I do I actually? I I think you know I think a few years ago, when it would be if you'd had a cyber attack, if you had a breach, you would kind of put it under the carpet, let's say, and hope nobody noticed. Yeah. <laughs> and then the things like GDPR came in, which is which, which was a really good catalyst for. Mm. Well, I'm almost like oh they were forcing people to have to be a little bit more open and yeah. having to report these things but actually we've kind of shifted even further i think to the point where it's about being open and transparent yeah. and you, you, your whole you need to have this um, position of being trustworthy mm -hmm. so if things are going to get go wrong you are going to be attacked <laughs> and I think that's, you know, as, as more and more companies start embracing digital and, and all of these things together, you know, that the cyber criminals and, this, and everything else is evolving with it. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the reality that we live in. Um, so I think, you know, it's that kind of like, so assume compromise, assume you will be breached at some point or you're already being breached. Um, but therefore, if you come from that kind of position, it's then what, as again, you know, collectively as an industry, yeah. what can we do to help each other? And I also think that a lot of the larger organisations also have a kind of, you know, come back to that kind of morality thing. So how do we help the smaller ones? So, so the, a lot of smaller organizations yeah. that don't have the skills, they don't have the resources, they don't have the knowledge, capability. How can we empower them also to be stronger and better and do the right thing as well? And if we take it back to in, the individual, do you think that just in general, the, the public are becoming more aware of cyber and to take a little bit more responsibility of them, their own sort of breaches? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's becoming um, more apparent in terms of just the way that people are engaging with social media, you know, smart devices, 
everything it almost has been connected to the internet so i think people then understand yeah. uh, you know some of the threats around that um and i think we've got we've got more to do but i think there's also an onus on the manufacturers of products as yeah. well um to make sure that you know you don't just um leave it to the individual to th know that they're supposed to change yeah. their passwords yeah. and that kind of thing again it's that how can we enable them um to be as secure as we possibly can uh, and help them with the awareness and training yeah. and all of these things so you know things like national cyber security center and all of yeah. these different campaigns and and all of those things all help i think to get mm. that message across um but it's it, it's not one of these things where you know you just do 30 minutes once a year and, and suddenly think every, you know everyone yeah. knows everything there is no it's a continuous yeah um life cycle as i was sort of saying that the threats are evolving all the time yeah. so you have to make sure that people are aware of what's coming mm -hmm. and with covid in particular there there's an exploitation of a mm -hmm. crisis um there's been an increase in covid related you know um phishing laws where yeah. people yeah. will kind of say oh i've got a loan or you know click on this link and i'll give you yeah, a special deal or i'll get you some yeah. testing and and all of these and it's all there to manipulate people yeah so that's why we have to then think about well how do we help them yeah there's a psychology behind it isn't there, there really? is absolutely yeah. I, I wonder whether the different generations are more aware of it because in a weird way i feel like my generation is more numb to the risks out there because they've they've grown up with it and it's just a way of life whereas for example my grandparents will not shop online because they're like well somebody can get my bank details online whereas me i would put my bank details like on any sort of website if I was buying something. So I wonder whether it is sort of a generational thing as well, whether to just be more naturally cautious because you're not really, you don't understand the technology as much as say. I think so. I think you're right. I think it's a, yeah. uh, these younger people have just grown up with social yeah, media that, yeah. um, and that kind of, they openly share and overshare yeah. information. So the concept of privacy it isn't it isn't there like the older generations but my mum used to be the same yeah. she would not do any internet banking nice. um she wouldn't do any online shopping and as much as i tried to encourage her to do it she was like no nope, no nope, no so it's, it's funny because they were it's almost like they were more mindful about all of these things but yeah. then you kind of think about actually maybe they were more secure or like people who used to put their money under their mattress yeah, I know. <laughs> That's you know, rather than put it in the bag. So yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I just think, and that's a, that's a, that's exactly what we're saying, isn't it? Is that that as as things evolve and the technology evolves and and the way that people interact with services, is their their whole mindset shifts yeah. with it. And yeah. I think that's what we need to be. We need to be kind of like, what messages do we give to young people, yeah. to older generations, etc. And that's that. Therefore, the message is not one size fits all. You know we've got to kind of tailor that message about what's going to resonate with them yeah to individuals yeah and moving away from that when i was listening to the podcast that you did with annabelle um you were telling a story about it was quite a pivotal point in your career where you were on a training course and a manager of uh, a male manager of 20 years turned around and said stupid little girl or silly little girl or something yeah he told me he said why don't you shut up you little silly little girl yeah <laughs> Oh my gosh. I mean, it's, that's just insane. But do you think in a less sort of openly sexist and derogatory way that this still happens in the workplace? Um, a little bit. Yeah. I, I found, I, to be honest, I've never had an issue I, in the workplace of being a woman. Yeah. What I found was an issue, you know, when I was, it was actually my age, actually, in terms of, having that credibility and being taken seriously yeah. because people think well as you sort of say and I, i've been doing this job for 20 years you know you, this is your first job you know what do you know yeah and it's quite dismissive about you know people can still have opinions and still yeah. people are still trying to learn um but i, I don't know I, I think there is still a little bit of that ageist thing i yeah. you know you know, think of like you know people who've got more credibility seem to be people who are much much older yeah. and people who are who are ignored when they're younger um but i think it's again you know it's it's, it's us being mindful 
about how do we make sure that everyone has that voice at the table yeah. and, if, and if somebody has been undermined um you know with their elder younger whatever the case may be is helping to make sure that their voice is heard and i think that was the thing that i never had at that time nobody stuck up for me i think if one person had actually just called it out it would have been a bit different it just it, and it, it goes to show doesn't it that it does need to be a collective effort to change this and have these conversations and call people out on it because it's not really enough it, you know if you'd have turned around and said something back to him would it have actually made a difference to his life probably not um, so I think it just shows the importance of that. But if you could go back to when you were starting out in your career, so maybe it would be that pivotal moment, what would you actually say to yourself to give yourself a little bit of advice? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I had a habit when I was younger of just keep volunteering for things. You know, even if <laughs> I kept putting myself forward, even if I didn't know what it was I was volunteering for. Yeah. And I had a little bit of a nasty habit of not being able to say no, but... I think actually if I hadn't have done that, if I hadn't have put myself forward for some of these opportunities, I probably wouldn't have been where I am today. So actually I would have just sort of said, you know, don't be afraid to just, just keep pushing forward, to yeah. keep putting your, to, to keep volunteering, keep doing these things because you never quite know where it's going to lead. Yeah, I know. And to finish it off, um, who is the single most extraordinary person to have inspired change in your life? I'm going to say, actually, my art teacher. Okay. When I was at oh, yeah, you went to art college, yeah. Yeah, well, it was, and this was before, this was when I was at school. Okay. Um, so it, well, things went a bit wrong at art college. Come on, because you are where but, you are now. Well, but. yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But actually, you know, this, this uh, man, um, this, he really made me feel um that you know the world of my oyster to be really creative to use your imagination and to not have any boundaries yeah. so he was that first person that made me feel that actually there was a world of possibilities yeah um and i think um and he used to always and i used to love art and i used to paint these big massive pictures and he was the one who just kind of said just think bigger think yeah. wider you know just just paint anything that's in your imagination and, and I think I've kind of always had that in me um, wow. in terms of just that problem solving, that thinking a big picture thing. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what I've always had for my career. Yeah. That's probably what's why I'm doing the role that I'm doing. But he yeah. was the, I would think he was the kind of like the first person that really just enabled me yeah. to just have be this really creative person. But it was only when I went to art college that I had the opposite teacher who really? just said, no, 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 paint what you see, paint, just paint this bottle over and over again. We don't want you to use your imagination. He killed it off for me a little bit and yeah. then it took me a while to kind of get my mojo back. Yeah. But I think one person can, can do that. you or yeah. break you. And I yeah. think that's the sad thing is I don't necessarily think sometimes people think about their actions and the effect yeah. they have on people mm -hmm. just by like a single comment or something that they do, but it has a profound impact, I think, on some yeah. people. Yeah, it does, it does. I think that's interesting as well, that lesson that it was something quite literal at the time that you were painting and you needed to think bigger, but it's now a message that you can carry on in your career, mm -hmm. in your life, just as a metaphorical uh, message. That's a good yeah. one.